This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Welcome, welcome, welcome to number 25 of the Monocast. Hello, everybody. Hello, Leon. How are hello, you? Hello, hello. <laughs> I'm pretty good. And you? Always good. Thank you. <laughs> um, we have a not so technical interview today. Um, oh. We're still. Teresa, Teresa Suarez Martin from beautiful Spain. And we did talk about a more strategic marketing strategy thing and, of course, how to implement all that in Mordic. And the topic of that is B2C marketing, differences to B2B marketing, all that with funnel building, and uh, all the jazz. Uh, like always, we have a good collection of news for you before we start with the interview. And the yeah. one and most important one is, of course, that Mordic 4 is is uh, uh, getting closer. Yeah, um, closer we, and closer. We, we do have a, an alpha version, 4.0 alpha has been released already. Yeah. And uh, the 4.0 final version is scheduled for May 24th. Can you believe it? Yeah, time's flying by. Yeah. Yeah. Just, <laughs> and Mordic is flying by. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. No, no, it's <laughs> flying ahead. Um, of course, a, a major release is a major release because it contains uh, breaking changes. Yeah. So we, have, we see the introduction of Symphony 4 and PHP 8.0 uh, mm -hmm. under the hood. Um, we I love the fact that we now have uh, native composer support. Yeah, finally. On top of it, of mm -hmm. it, uh, the Mordic Marketplace mm -hmm. infrastructure. That does not mean. I mean, you may recall the, the Marketplace episode that we did some some time time in the past. Yeah. <laughs> this does not mean that we now have Marketplace front end and then the place for selling uh, your plugins and then <laughs> um, subscriptions and everything yeah. you desire. That's going to be in the next version. Uh, no, just kidding. Um, no, but it's the infrastructure, and it's, it's so important and um, very valuable. Yep. We also uh, will have the new email builder that we just talked about in the last episode, mm -hmm. now being the mainstream thing, out of beta. Yeah. Um, and that's another thing that I do love, and uh, lots of bits and pieces, of course. Yep. And uh, again, May 24, I can't believe it. Yes. It's um, so close so, already. Yeah, yeah. And um, all the props to the team, but but I think I think it's really ambitious. Um, um, yeah. Lacey. Yeah, there's been another type of news out there. Um, got it. I think many of you out there already heard it. They provide Mordic plugins. Um, there's been some rumors, I think, in the forum that they've been out of business and non-existent anymore. So we... Yeah, check that out and they're still are on the market and updating their plugins to version 3 and I think they also get a new plugin the so-called name API plugin if I reconcile correctly um, it's for checking names that people put in your forums um, against a database with a lot of names so they put, don't put trash into it <laughs> Yeah, I wonder what the exact rules are. I know there's multiple, not just the plain database lookup. Yeah. But yeah, it's if you want to make sure it's not, not junk being entered in your forms, that might be something to try. Um, yeah, greets to the US and our friends at Gordit. Um, another piece of good news is this contribution-wise, in this case, open source contribution is a plugin on GitHub for Mordic that allows you to uh, set timing for sending emails out of uh, campaigns. And the, the reason that this is important is that it relates to the time zone of the recipient. Ah, yep. and That's uh, something that has been very, very frequently, frequently requested. Mm -hmm. And uh, now it finally is there. It's so called sort of cron style, so so a rather technical way to define the time you want to send it. Yep. But it does take the time zone of the recipient. If if not, it falls back to the system time zone or something like that. Um, and so this way, you can now finally say, okay, send this to the person when for him or her it is uh, eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. big deal, big deal. And uh, thanks to Joey for, for hinting this to me. We were in a different discussion uh, 
and I got this tip. Yeah, and very found, found it to be wow, <laughs> Mr. Joey Keller again. Yeah, um, talking about uh, something new on the blog. There's been a new integration for uh, yeah with Mordic for WordPress by Make Web Better. Um, there already is an integration on the market, but they took it a step further and made a bit deeper integration, like providing your Mordic dashboard in WordPress and uh, some more bits and pieces and new types of features. I say if you're using the um, integration, you should definitely check it out. The link to that in the show notes as always. Oh yeah, and uh, all the other things, like always, you will find them in the show notes as well and in our newsletter which i'm sure you already signed yeah, up of to. course i hope so <laughs> yeah um same is true for uh, another piece of code we did mention an rss2 email plugin last time mm -hmm. a new one that, that supports modic 3 now another one has been updated uh, that's one by chris R A O W, <laughs> so yep. better to check the link <laughs> than uh, just trying to, to spell it yourself. Uh, that's one is a pre-existing one. It's now available for Modic three as well. Yeah, and to, to all of you guys who are uh, and gals <laughs> who are updating to Modic three finally, mm -hmm. while you're at it, <laughs> take the the four O alpha and make sure it's compatible as well, or maybe wait for the beta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, and uh, before we now come to the interview, a little bit of a TV, TV tip for tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <Maybe Yeah. laughs> some other place. We have another episode from Joey of his marketing automation show. It's number four now, and it's called Email, Email, Email. Oh, what, what will it be about? It, <laughs> yeah, it, indeed, it is <laughs> about email in a technical way. So yeah. if you are setting up an email um, connection or, or more sophisticated email connection for Mordic, this one is for you yeah. because it's a really good explanation. All right, and now finally, let's move on to the more non technical part to the uh, purpose of this whole thing yeah. about marketing strategy and all. And I'm very happy to welcome today Teresa Suarez Martin. And there we go. Welcome, Teresa, to the show. Good to have you. Yeah, thank you so much, Eke, for your invitation. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, when we got in touch in the context of the Mordic community, it uh, immediately turned out that you have much broader knowledge uh, in, in marketing, especially in B2B. And um, so I, I invited you on the Mordicast, and I, we love to have more general knowledge on the Mordicast. And so we, we thought it may, might make sense to discuss exactly the thing about B2B versus other segments. Um, quick introduction, I understand you are a freelancer yeah. um, as a marketing strategist and then also a marketing teacher. Among others, you are with the ESSEC Business Marketing School in Madrid. In so, Sevilla, um, yeah. <laughs> that tells me you are located in Spain, right? Yeah. Um, do you have any la English language background? Uh, how comes the, your English is so well? So tell <laughs> us a little bit about yourself. Thank you. It's just work in progress all the time. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm specifically in Seville, in a co-working space called Working Companies, where I used to spend eight hours a day or more. <laughs> and yeah, I've been in, in Ireland and Scotland since 2007 for months or trips. I started mm. working as an au pair, just taking care of kids. And I really love um, the Irish culture and, and I've got friends in the UK as well. So I really enjoy watching series in Netflix in English uh, as well. So I try to keep <laughs> my English go working. Yeah, very helpful. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so so did I get your professional background right? Can you tell us a little bit more about your day-to-day -day work? Yeah, um, yeah. It, it was really, it was really nice. Your the um, what you mentioned, and I love teaching. I love working with um, companies, and I'm specialized in working with tech companies and entrepreneurs. is is something that I do at, uh, as part of the board of mentors in AOF, which is Andalusia Open Future. Mm -hmm. It's an accelerator here in Seville. And it's really nice working with tech companies and startups because you can try 
and you can fail and you can try again. So yeah. I get to learn a lot. Yeah, excellent. A, a, a ton of questions come to my mind immediately, but but let's let's talk marketing and then start start on a general level. Um, I mean, we, we do have multiple aspects here for, for today. So let's start with the most general one. Um, that's inbound marketing in general. How, how do you implement something that really works? Well, working, it's in, in my opinion, it's really linked to listen and investigation, like research of your prospect and of your target. So I will start really from the beginning, uh, making an audit of my company, the background, the footprint, the digital footprint, and investigating the target, doing the empathy map as well, is something that I really enjoy doing. And after that, we can start with the AIDA model, like awareness, interest, desire, and action. So I will try to, to know which channels do I can use to the awareness, try to, to get to know the, my keywords and everything. So I will start from that. And using mainly content adapted, Uh, in the following steps, um, that's what I will use. Yeah, if if I want to a strategy, uh, I want to make them work uh, the actions. Uh, I will keep investigating all the time and listening to my customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and in my experience, that heavily depends on on the nature of of what it is all about mostly it is selling and, and sometimes it's different goals but in many cases it's it's a long-term thing yeah. especially in b2b, in B2B yeah. right so it's about lead generation and long buying cycles etc and not so much impulse purchase as, as it is in other segments right yeah sure yeah um now i of course come from from the angle of, of marketing automation yeah. as the as a tool for inbound marketing um, and if you go further down the, the funnel you, 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 we basically uh, well you basically mentioned awareness and, and interest maybe and and driving traffic to traffic to the website um, and uh, further down the funnel there are more things that are more interesting or where, where marketing automation can do more for us I would think um, Yeah, shall, shall we move on to, to talk, talk a little bit more of the definitions of like, like what, what do we mean by B2B and what else makes sense to differentiate, hmm. etc.? Yeah, and, and uh, as you say, in marketing automation, I, I, uh, I would say that especially at the beginning, at the first uh, steps, I think that it's really, really important to... Yeah, integrate in your strategy in case also that you're managing a lot of leads and you need to qualify them or you need to get to respond them in a really nice way and making notes about them, what they are, things that are important for them. And in the definition of B2B and B2C, I would like to, you know, to, to talk about what's the decision maker or the prescriber or the influencer related to B2C and B2B. For example, in B2C, I'm, I'm buying something for myself or to, mm -hmm. as a present to my mom or my boyfriend or something. So... It's really an informal relation with the purchase. Mm -hmm. It's in my personal sphere normally. And um, it can be a rational or emotional decision. Normally it's mixed. But mm -hmm. 
the consequence of the of buying something, a product or a service, it would just imply myself or my family if I'm buying that for my family. And in the other, uh, the opposite way is the B2B because you are buying something, a, a product or a service for your company with within your company budget and with their fund that involves not accepting all the risk. It's normally it's part of a group decision and it's something that it will have consequences in my work environment and in my company, in my department. So normally it's a really formal decision and it, in, in my opinion, is more rational than irrational. Right. It's not mm-hmm. an impulsive. So you, you will, maybe you will um, compare three different suppliers in depth. So you need a lot of characteristics of the features of the product or the service. So it's really a different mechanism. Okay. Okay. Um, does it make sense to differentiate any further, like like uh, B two um, E or things like that, or B two G, uh, government and, and education, etc.? Do, do you do that in your your strategies or? Is yeah. It all yeah. Normally, I've I've been working. Yeah, I've been working in with the administration, government, or the city hall or public companies. And mm-hmm. it's a really different um, strategy because you are not asking to buy anything. It's just um, awareness. Uh, it's, it's mainly branding. And maybe you have to sell free spots for a course or something, but yeah. it's more... It's difficult because um, the reputation of the entity is always uh, an important thing to take care of. Mm-hmm. Okay. Before, before we try to translate all that into actual strategy elements or, or ideas or, or recommendations, uh, let's maybe reflect a little bit. When, when we look at the funnel from, from top to bottom, um, what are the building blocks that we can work with uh, within or without Mordic, it doesn't matter, but but just to, to help everybody to understand what we mean by attention, etc. Yeah, so sure. Can you talk about sure. that for a bit? Yeah. Uh, it's always a cycle. Uh, when We can call it funnel, but I like to picture that as a cycle with the leads and the contacts moving. And the step one, it's always attract. Um, I like to compare that with flirting in a bar or something. So mm-hmm. um, you, you have to attract the attention and turn strangers from visitors. So they can visit your space in the bar, for example. So they are... In your place, your website, or uh, next to you, in this case. And the second step, it will be convert. Uh, You aim to convert these visitors into leads. And Mm -hmm. how can we do that? We need to give them um, information, content... Uh, fun, whatever they expect Mm -hmm. to trust you and to give their phone number or the, uh, um, and to have another date or your email in the case you are visiting a website. Mm -hmm. So that will be the conversion. The third step will be closing, closing the, the, um, the cell. And how do we close it? We need to give them more details. We need to keep talking. We need to keep 
laughing or uh, in a formal or an informal context, but we need to get to know us and I need to give you all the details you, you need to consider that I'm your best option. So it's, that's what that would relate to lead nurturing. And all, exactly. All that. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. That will be mm -hmm. lead nurturing. It's like when you're in a you know in a special friendship and the good morning message that mm -hmm. make you smile. So something like that. It's like make me yeah. happy, or or make me uh, feel special. Or give me some details and I will trust you. Yeah. That's the closing um, mm -hmm. step in, in, my, in my vision as, as I picture it. And the last part is delight. Uh, we need, of course, is not just about marketing. It's about mm -hmm. the product and the, or the service itself. So we need to delight our client. And the, the last part, it will be like the, the next step, is make them recommend me or recommend you. Uh, like with an yeah. affiliation program, upselling, yeah. cross-selling. Uh, so we are fine together as a couple, but... What's next? Mm. So maybe it's the baby. <laughs> <laughs> I like the analogy. <laughs> Because, but it does have some flaws, I think. It's, it's, how I, um, yeah. it's how I explain that in class. And they always laugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me try to, to uh, recap and, and uh, reflect a little bit. Um, I th think that the top of the funnel or even, uh, of the top of cycle doesn't make sense, right? So the, the beginning of the whole thing is outside, outside of Mordic typically, right? When, when you try to raise awareness uh, in, in social media or if, you, or if you want to attract attention to those who are already on the lookout in, in, in SEO, SEA, that's not Mordic unless we're talking retargeting here. Um, once they are on the website or uh, the, the point where we hook into Mordic, we can start um, um, trying to, to create a lead, what, what you described. Um, in, uh, when we turn that into technical terms, of course, we do have content and everything and, and, and good, good optics, but we can also do some intelligent things like, like uh, dynamic website content uh, or focus items or banners, etc. Mm -hmm. And then have the <clears throat> have the the form etc for modic to to facilitate the lead generation uh what's next it's it's conversion and nurturing that we did talk about obviously we're talking about the channels that we have in modic within modic uh outside of modic in the digital field like like send emails sms what have you tweets or even postcards mm -hmm. um the the other thing that in my experience, is is important part is the lead qualification and the eventual handover to sales. Even sure, um, that the, you did talk about that earlier, and then the post sales, the the uh, the delight thing. Um, yeah, again, back to email and 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 all with all the smart things there. Yeah, may, maybe we can talk about smart things or or specific examples. Uh, um, yeah, C can you give us an example or two of, of good good ideas or implementations? Yeah, sure. For example, um, imagine that I'm selling online training for tech uh, profiles, uh, IT teams. Um, so I have uh, one example can be who is the decision maker. Uh, and who is the influencer. So maybe I have to create content for the influencer. Maybe it's the human resources and mm -hmm. uh, it's the human resources um, team. So maybe I need to create a blog or a podcast to, 
make the human resources professionals learn mm -hmm. and love me and 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 I will be in their top of mind and in the moment they've got a um, budget to train their IT team mm -hmm. they will think about my company and they will um they will find for the best option and compare my offer with another offer mm -hmm. but thanks to the content i'm always close to them uh, it's it's a real example it worked very well with a podcast uh, in that company and <laughs> and when they were ready to compare my company with another company mm. i or we we send them success cases at that final part mm -hmm. of the process okay and they saw that all of the competitors were working with us or some of them and they were um they had data to compare us and also the return of their investment Uh, mm -hmm. training the teams and how they impact in their happiness as workers and everything. So that would be a specific example. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. <laughs> um, when, when I think of, of the way to get there, if, if I'm in a small startup, that might be easier. But if I'm, I, I'm in an enterprise environment, Uh, and, and do the whole thing. For one thing, it's multiple talents involved here and probably even multiple players. So creating a stri stri strategic approach and campaigns on the one end, doing the creative uh, ideas and executing those ideas like, like in content or graphics, etc. Do the technical part, so implement a workflow or run Mordic, uh, do analytics, ads, and and get them all in, in, in conjunction. And of course, other things like website and the CRM that are, are all there anyway. And then the bridges to other things like like sales team. It's so many components. And, and um, what, what set of, of roles and, and co collaboration have you seen that worked well as, as a core of this project? How would you approach that? It's a really difficult question. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's, it's the, the, um, the most difficult um, part is to, to have a team that is uh, aligned with the um, vision of the strategy. And if we are all motivated and we, uh, we know what we want, it's when the real magic happens. But we have to be like an orchestra because, um, for example, in, in a company I'm working with, we, we are doing a lot of webinars at the moment. Mm -hmm. And we, we get to, we make the um, sales department run a part of the webinar. Mm -hmm. Because we want them to know um, that their audience of the webinar can be their clients because they are their clients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's really difficult, it, as you said. So many players involved. Um, I think that the only the, the only way it's to um, make some agreements within yeah. the, the departments because marketing yeah. and sales we have to be really aligned really that's special yeah. <laughs> if not <laughs> it's not going to work I agree. so i love having coffee with the sales department i love talking to them i i i love collaboration yeah because we can learn a lot from them in 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 the cell if we if the sales department yeah. share with marketing the client's doubts, the client's barriers, we can turn it into content. And mm -hmm. it will be really successful. It will be because it will be 
part of of their the barriers or what they want or their expectations. So collaboration uh, and it's really difficult collaboration uh, mm -hmm. because we have a lot of tasks involved. Um, but I would say that is the best um, strategy. In, in yeah. So so basically, what what you're saying is. Make, make sure to have clear rules on one end, but but also uh, learning and mutu mutual understanding on the other end. Sure, okay. yeah. Getting uh, to know everyone's role in order mm. to empathize with, with their roles and what they have to do to succeed. Okay. Um, so before we wrap this up... Um, I have one last question, and that is, uh, what's the one biggest pitfall that you would tell us about, tell us to avoid, or bring to our attention? <laughs> I've got a few. <laughs> Because um, working with startups, uh, we try a lot of things. And mm -hmm. of course, I'm mentor. I don't execute the strategies. But before they were a pitfall, <laughs> Uh, yeah. We stop it. <laughs> and for example, um, trying to do PR or press campaigns before your product or service is ready to the market to, to, to mm -hmm. be hired, it's, it's yeah. a red line. Okay. Or for example, um, start um, investing in social ads and Google Ads without making a little experiment before. Okay, yeah. Uh, so we, we recommend that you split the budget in different channels, run an experiment, because you can, in your mind, maybe you have to do Facebook and Instagram ads, social ads, but mm -hmm. maybe... Is not the best option. So why don't you start with an experiment? So I, I like to start with a month of experiment for for paid media. Uh, and another thing, uh, a really big pitfall we 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 see, it's um, running a Google Ads campaign with a landing. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's something yeah, that, it's we, that we, right, right, yeah, right. we can say that it's obvious, yeah. but you can check and click, yeah. and that will lead them more. to the yeah. to the homepage. And yeah. I compare <laughs> the the um, the homepage with a very civilian thing, which is La Feria mm. de Sevilla. It's like a yeah. big party with yeah. a lot of inputs. Yeah, famous, famous. Yeah. So it's like. Sending people to your homepage is mm -hmm. like sending people to the Feria de Sevilla. They will be <laughs> all confused. They yeah. won't know where to go, where to click. So you're not going to convert anything uh, if you if you don't use a landing page. So okay, that will be it. something. Okay. Teresa, thank you so much. <laughs> um, where can people find you online and hook up? Yeah, my, my favorite um, network is Twitter okay. and LinkedIn. So I'm okay. on Twitter um, um, it, just with my name, Tere, uh, T E R E S A. Yeah, no you worries. can share that. <laughs> and of course, okay. LinkedIn. I love collaboration. And mm -hmm. thank you, Eke, for inviting me. I really have a nice time. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much for your time and uh, we're happy to have you in the Mod community. Yeah. <laughs> See you soon. Keep in touch. All right, Teresa, take care. Bye. 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 Mm, yeah, there are many good aspects and ideas, but I think that every project brings its own like trickiness and it's hard to apply that to every project and because you got to perform it in a new way. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's it. That's the way marketing is. If It's not all the same and then the real magic uh, comes from applying it in the right way to your specific case. Being flexible, yeah. 
uh, yeah, and having the right ideas. Oh, let's not go <laughs> do that again. Okay, dokie. What else, Leon? Um, yeah, there's a new type of um, help, I'd say, in the forum, because there's a new so-called Mautic Help Desk Meetup. Um, it's a meetup. Um, between yeah, people who got questions and people who got answers, just community members. Um, it is moderated by a few moderators, so we have a civil discussion and everybody that has questions can come there and ask them and I'm pretty sure he or she will get help. Um, the next episode or next year date where it will take place, I think it's the 4th of May, and um, yeah, the exact time will be linked in the show notes as always <laughs> i love the fact that you talk about the civil discussion <laughs> yeah. because we have more than one yeah. moderator yeah uh, yeah they say it's not like like uh anonymous <laughs> morticians yeah <laughs> but it, it certainly is uh, everybody helps everyone mm -hmm. and it's a new format i'm, I'm curious to see how it's going to work out it's certainly going to evolve over time yeah. um and it's Uh, led by David Chargill and by, by Joey once again. Oh, yeah. And um, I did not attend the, the last one, the, the first one, but I heard that it was more than 20 people and a good oh. success. And, and I, I'm sure it's going to be something good. Yeah, so it's pretty promising. Yeah. Yeah. And um, what else do we have on the schedule? We do have a couple of sprints coming up. Oh, yeah. Obviously, we, we do have the Mordic 4 release. We also have the Mordic Con coming up. Mm -hmm. Um And in preparation for that, we have a Morticon sprint yeah. this Friday. That's April 23rd. Mm -hmm. And at the same date, the Mordic 4 beta sprint is going to start. Mm -hmm. This one is going to go for three days, so Friday through Sunday. Mm -hmm. If you are able to spend a couple of hours on one or more than one of these days, you're very, very welcome. No. Uh, it's not too late to get on board. Uh, for me <laughs> personally, you're, you're very welcome in the Morricon team, uh -huh. but, but uh, in the larger picture, of course, you are very welcome to contribute anywhere in the Mordic world. So, and even for this, you will find the things in the show note and um, easy access to contribution. Yeah. Yeah, that's it for today, <laughs> my friends. <laughs> yeah. um, We'll have more coming up in just two weeks, I hope. Mm -hmm. it, it has been a little bit, little bit longer break before, because we have a lot of projects at hand uh, here. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, but, but we promise to do our best to get back real soon with even more good content from the Mordecast. Until then, stay safe, stay tuned. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.